Recent footage from Yellowstone does not show a disaster. It shows a growing absence. Animals are leaving. Bison. Elk. Pronghorn are disappearing from valleys they have used for generations. Not in panic. Not in chaos. But quietly retreating. As if they have sensed something humans have not yet understood. What is unsettling is that these movements are not happening on their own. They are appearing alongside ground uplift, dense earthquake swarms, and hydrothermal explosions occurring close to tourist walkways. According to the latest reports, all of this is still being described as normal. History suggests that normal is often the word used just before things change. If that is the case, why are the animals leaving first? What is Yellowstone beginning to reveal? And what consequences may be waiting ahead? All data in this video comes from respected research agencies, with original sources listed at the end. Let's find out. One, the first warning came from animals. There was no alarm, no emergency announcement. Yellowstone did not change in a single moment, but quietly, in a way many people only noticed once the pieces began to fit together. The earliest reactions did not come from laboratories or scientific bulletins, but from animals, not in panic, not following seasonal patterns, but slowly leaving valleys that had supported them for generations, bison, elk, pronghorn, and even smaller mammals began appearing less frequently in familiar areas. While their tracks showed up more often at higher elevations, what caught the attention of rangers and biologists was not just the movement itself, but the timing, a gradual, scattered shift that did not match any known migration pattern. Most of the first images did not come from formal reports, but from visitor cameras and people who follow Yellowstone day after day. They spread not because they were dramatic, but because they felt difficult to explain. The animals were not fleeing or scattering. They were leaving slowly and deliberately, as if following instincts long before humans realized something was changing. At the same time, Yellowstone began to shift beneath the surface. GPS and satellite data recorded slight ground uplift across several areas of the park, only a few centimeters per year. To an outside observer, that number might seem insignificant, but in a geothermal system sitting atop one of the largest volcanic structures on Earth, small changes are rarely meaningless. They are logged, compared, and measured against decades of past observations. Alongside the uplift came increasingly dense earthquake swarms, not large earthquakes that trigger emergency alerts, but hundreds, sometimes thousands, of small tremors occurring repeatedly in the same locations. Yellowstone is no stranger to earthquakes, averaging between 1,500 and 2,500 each year. What drew attention was not the total count, but how these tremors clustered together, lasting days or even weeks, as if the system below was constantly readjusting pressure. Then came the hydrothermal explosions, occurring in some of the most heavily visited areas of the park. Hot water and steam burst from the ground near boardwalks and viewing areas. Several locations were closed for investigation, including Biscuit Basin, a well-known destination. Images of visitors quickly moving away as steam hissed and the ground trembled beneath their feet spread rapidly, leaving the sense that a familiar boundary of safety had been crossed. Each of these events, on its own, can be explained. Yellowstone is a living system where magma, groundwater, and tectonic faults constantly interact. Small earthquakes are common. The ground has risen and fallen before. Hydrothermal explosions are not unprecedented. But when animals leave, the ground swells, earthquake swarms intensify, and explosions occur beneath human pathways, all within the same period. The question no longer rests on any single event. What unsettles many observers is the parallel nature of these changes. On one side, nature is behaving differently in subtle but consistent ways. On the other, the park remains open. Visitors continue to arrive, and official statements continue to emphasize that conditions remain within normal limits. Between those two realities, the line between normal and concerning begins to blur. History shows that major risks rarely begin with chaos. They often begin with a quiet phase, when signs are present but still vague enough to be dismissed. And it is precisely when those signs begin to overlap that science steps in. Not to warn, but to reassure that everything is still fine. Two, science says everything is norma. When nature begins to behave differently, the first human response is not to run, but to look for an explanation. At Yellowstone, that explanation arrived quickly. It sounded reasonable, and it was reassuring enough to convince millions of people that there was still nothing to worry about. According to geologists, Yellowstone has never been a quiet place. 
It is one of the most active geothermal systems in the world, where small earthquakes, ground uplift, and hydrothermal explosions have been part of a long-standing normal state for thousands of years. On average, the region records between 1,500 and 2,500 earthquakes each year, most of them too small for people to feel. Earthquake swarms, while noticeable because of their density, are still considered familiar features in the historical record. Ground uplift is explained in the same way. GPS and satellite data show that Yellowstone has gone through multiple cycles of rising and sinking over the past several decades, reflecting the movement of magma and hot water beneath the surface. Changes of a few centimeters per year, according to official interpretations, fall within the normal range of variation for a system this large and complex. In many previous cases, similar uplift episodes stabilized on their own without leading to any serious events. Hydrothermal explosions, even when they occur near tourist areas and cause alarm, are also described as the result of pressure building in shallow pockets of hot water. Yellowstone contains thousands of hot springs, geysers, and steam vents, and the system is constantly changing. Closing a boardwalk or restricting access to an area, officials say, is a precaution in an environment that is never completely safe to begin with. Even the movement of animals is placed into a category that can be explained. Wildlife may respond to subtle changes in temperature, food availability, or environmental conditions. In an ecosystem as large as Yellowstone, animal behavior rarely has a single cause. From a scientific standpoint, there is no direct evidence that these movements signal an imminent major geological event. Most importantly, monitoring agencies emphasize that Yellowstone is under continuous surveillance by a dense network of modern instruments. More than 50 seismic stations, GPS receivers, gas sensors, and satellite systems operate close to real time. If there were clear signs that activity was crossing a safety threshold, the public would be informed. Taken one phenomenon at a time, this picture feels reassuring. Yellowstone is not waking up in a sudden way. It has always been active. The likelihood of a large eruption, especially a super eruption, is considered very low in the near future. For many people, these explanations are enough to believe that everything remains under control. But this is where a small question begins to surface. Not whether Yellowstone is about to erupt, but how we are using the word normal. Science is very good at explaining individual pieces. What is far more difficult is recognizing the moment when those pieces begin to overlap in ways that feel unfamiliar. And if normal simply means that things still resemble the past. What happens when nature starts to change in combinations? The past has never recorded. Three, when normal no longer fits, everything has an explanation. Every number stays within an accepted range, and that is exactly what makes the situation most unsettling. Danger rarely appears when thresholds are clearly crossed. It often appears when too many things sit close to the line still labeled normal, while official reports continue to emphasize that Yellowstone is behaving as expected for an active geothermal system. A small group of independent observers has begun paying attention to changes that do not stand out in brief summaries. They are not looking for an explosive moment or a dramatic signal, but for slow, repeated, and consistent shifts over time, not a single event, but a trend. When they compared satellite imagery and monitoring data month by month, they noticed that in some areas the ground was no longer rising and falling the way it had in earlier cycles. Instead, uplift appeared slow but steady, small enough to escape attention in individual reports, yet clear enough to form a zone of deformation when time markers were placed side by side. For anyone looking at isolated snapshots, it was easy to miss. For those watching long term, the difference became harder to dismiss. What drew even more attention was the timing. Earthquake swarms became more frequent in the same areas experiencing surface deformation, not large quakes that would trigger alerts, but repeated small tremors, as if the system below were constantly adjusting pressure. Scientifically, this could still fall within normal behavior, but when those tremors consistently aligned with areas of uplift, the coincidence became difficult to ignore. Then came smaller details that created a lingering sense of unease. Some people analyzing public data noticed periods when seismic records appeared less complete than usual. Some days showed only a few hours of data out of a full 24-hour cycle. There were no statements suggesting information was being withheld, and no clear explanations were offered. Technically, such gaps can result from maintenance or transmission issues. But in a context where many signs are overlapping, they began to be viewed differently. At the same time, new scientific studies added complexity to the picture. Seismologists confirmed the presence of a deep and much larger magma source than previously understood. This magma body is mostly solid, 
with scattered pockets of melt. According to the researchers themselves, this does not mean an eruption is imminent. Scientifically, the discovery does not increase short-term risk, but it does remind us that the system beneath Yellowstone is more complex than the models used to monitor it. Here, the boundary between reassurance and uncertainty begins to blur. Science is correct in saying there are no signs that activity has crossed a dangerous threshold. Yet nature, through small, repeated, and simultaneous signals, suggests that something may be shifting in ways that do not fit neatly into routine reports. The issue is not that anyone is clearly wrong. The issue is that in systems like Yellowstone, truth rarely arrives as a single, definitive answer. It lives in gray zones, where complete data still does not bring full certainty. And if these signals are not isolated, if they are overlapping in patterns we do not yet fully understand, then the greatest risk may not lie in Yellowstone itself. It may lie in how we respond during the period when everything still looks normal enough to be dismissed. From here, the chain of consequences begins to move out of the ground and into everyday life. 4. When risk reaches everyday life, everything is still being called normal, but the consequences are beginning to show up in ways that feel real, close, and hard to undo. When areas like Biscuit Basin are forced to close for investigation, the first impact is not on science, but on daily life around Yellowstone. Boardwalk closures reroute tours, disrupt visitor schedules, and slow the rhythm of towns that depend on peak season traffic. For local communities, whether the park is open or closed on any given day is not just a safety issue. It is a question of revenue, jobs, and livelihoods. That uncertainty spreads faster than any tremor. It does not require an official warning. A simple feeling that something is not quite right is enough to change behavior. Visitors hesitate when making plans. Hotel bookings become unpredictable, and service workers are left making decisions while information always arrives later than real-life demands. In that way, risk begins to take effect even when no major event has occurred. Alongside the economic impact comes the management challenge. Every closure brings added costs for surveys, reinforcement, and intensified monitoring. Park officials must constantly balance keeping the park open with ensuring safety, reassuring the public without triggering panic. In a high-risk system, choosing to do nothing more can still carry consequences because it pushes pressure into the future. For people living near Yellowstone, a quiet fatigue begins to set in. Not fear of disaster tomorrow, but the strain of living with unanswered questions over time. Data updates come in phases. Explanations take time. Daily life does not, in that gap, Trust becomes the most fragile element of all. Here, a subtle loop begins to form. Small changes in nature lead people to adjust their behavior. Those adjustments then influence how risk is managed and communicated. Each step makes sense on its own. Together, they make the system more sensitive to delays and small errors. What is concerning is that this cycle does not need a disaster to function. A prolonged state of not serious enough to panic, but not calm enough to relax, is enough for risk to quietly escalate and it is in this uncertain middle ground that people often begin looking for a way to buy more time. History shows that not every solution makes a system more stable. Some simply shift risk into a different form. The question is whether the next step will be a careful adjustment or a new gamble with nature. Psych, buying time against nature. When risk is not yet severe enough to force decisive action, people often choose the most familiar option they try to buy more time. At Yellowstone, that response does not appear as a dramatic plan. It arrives quietly. Through closer monitoring and refined adjustments, seismic stations are recalibrated, satellite data is examined in greater detail, sensitive areas are more tightly defined, boardwalks are moved, closed, or reopened depending on risk levels. On the surface, the system appears faster and more precise. From a logical standpoint, this makes sense. Yellowstone is not a place that can be controlled or stabilized by human will. The only realistic option is to observe more closely, respond earlier, and hope that major changes leave enough warning. Technology, in this context, becomes the primary line of defense. Communication follows the same careful balance. Enough information to inform, but not enough to alarm. No emergency declarations. No public discussion of worst-case scenarios. Everything is framed as closely monitored a familiar phrase that reassures most people. This is where the fragility of the strategy becomes clear. These measures do not slow nature down. They only help people feel as though they are keeping pace. Models can suggest trends, but they cannot guarantee that the system will behave as it has before. 
Yellowstone does not operate on reporting schedules or communication cycles. For many, this is a necessary gamble. Doing nothing allows risk to accumulate. Doing too much can cause unnecessary economic and social harm. Between those extremes, buying time feels like the least harmful choice. But that gamble rests on an unspoken assumption that nature will continue to give people enough time to respond. History suggests that assumption does not always hold. Many natural systems have remained uncertain for long periods, only to shift faster than human adaptation allows. If our only strategy is to observe, adjust, and wait, the remaining question is simple and unsettling. What happens if Yellowstone's next change arrives faster than every model, faster than every response, and faster than the reassurance we are relying on? Sick. Are we listening too late? Yellowstone has not erupted. There are no emergency warnings. Nothing is forcing people to leave the region right now. From a scientific perspective, everything can still be placed within manageable bounds. But Yellowstone's story is not about a single event. It is about the familiar feeling of living atop a massive, complex system that we only partly understand. The ground rises and falls. Earthquakes come and go. Hydrothermal explosions can be explained. Each piece makes sense on its own. What troubles many people lies elsewhere. It is the moment when too many signs appear at once, when the line between normal and concerning becomes difficult to define. In moments like that, history tends to judge not by what nature did, but by how people listened. For generations that have witnessed disasters once dismissed, from floods and earthquakes to slow-moving environmental crises, Yellowstone brings back a familiar feeling, the sense that systems we trust continue to function until the day they do not, not because anyone intended to be wrong, but because long-standing confidence can delay recognition of subtle change. Yellowstone may simply be passing through another ordinary phase in its millions of years of activity. It may also be reminding us that normal is not a fixed state, but a narrow window between stability and change. Science will keep watching. Data will continue to update. The park will remain open, at least for now. The final question is not for Yellowstone. It is for us. Are people truly good at listening to early signals or only at explaining them after the fact? When we live on systems we cannot fully control, where is the line between reasonable reassurance and dangerous confidence? And if one day Yellowstone changes faster than expected, will we say it was unpredictable or admit that the signs had been there all along? What do you think? What signals is Yellowstone sending? And are we really listening in the right way? Thanks a lot for sticking with us till the very end. If you found this video useful, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe so you won't miss any of our daily uploads. And now, go ahead and explore some of our top recommended videos popping up on your screen. Goodbye, and see you in the next one.